while we bring in news from Stamford Bridge that Chelsea have let go of their manager, Frank Lampard. And, well, I guess it was coming, maybe. I don't know. But they did beat Luton Town yesterday in the FA Cup. But, you know, I guess the scoreline would say it was a comfortable win. You know, they had to win against the Championship Club. But I didn't think 24 hours later, Jack, we'd be talking about Frank Lampard leaving the club. Um, are you surprised? I am a little bit, even though your club is known for sacking managers. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised of the timing of it now. Um, we've just been speaking about it for the last couple of weeks. And I've, you know, I have sort of stated that I felt like maybe after the City game was usually our um, board's time of when they would maybe make a, a, a sort of rash decision. So I was expecting it to be around then. And the fact that we didn't do that and, and we sort of continued, I thought maybe, you know, we, we are actually on a um, sort of project that, um, that bullshit that we were given when Frank Lampard actually signed for Chelsea, that that's our vision for the future and all that. And um, I think because it was Frank Lampard, Chelsea fans sort of bought into that. Uh, and then here we are 18 months later with the usual um, thing of, of Chelsea are back to square one again, where we are looking for another manager or we're already appointing another manager who, um, yeah, we are, we, are, we are literally just gone back to, to, back to square one. I, I feel like... Um, the decision is a really strange one because um, the, the Chelsea supporters put out a banner yesterday. I don't know if you saw it, but it was actually at the stadium. And there was a banner of what the Chelsea supporters trust had put out. And it was sort of in Frank Lampard, we trust. And it said sort of then, now and, and forever. And then less than 24 hours later, the board have, have um, sacked him. So, um, yeah, I mean... It's weird as well that you would sack somebody after they win a game. I know it's only Luton in the FA Cup, but we're still in the FA Cup. We're still in the Champions League and we're only five points off the top four. So I don't actually see where the um, yeah where the issues are, really. I mean, yeah, OK, we're in ninth, but you know the, the points are so close in the table this year that it doesn't really matter where you are at the moment. You were down in 10th or lower than that and you're yeah, we, at the top we of the league, so it start. makes no sense. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We lost to Palace and got thrashed by Spurs and then, and then yeah. lost to Arsenal. So, yeah I, yeah, I don't get it. I mean, like, what I don't get is that he, he sacks him after they win a game, which makes me think, well, if this was determined before the looting game, then why not just get it done sooner? And, and if there's a new manager coming in, at least give him, at least it gives him more time to get to gel in with the players. Because Thomas Tuchel is, I believe, is the man that's going to be replacing Lampard, which I, I, I like Tuchel. I, I think the only problem I have with Tuchel is he's toxic. Um, he's hmm. known for what he's like in his press conferences, especially back in France. The French media and him didn't really get on at PSG. And, you know, with Dortmund, he was a bit of the same there. But, he's, you know, he's, he's a winning manager, I guess. He's won trophies with PSG, got into the Champions League final. So, in terms of modern football, he, he seems to be the right man. But, I don't know. I just don't get it. I, I, I think with Lampard as well, when you have a club that spend all that money in the summer... I always think that is a club backing a manager. You know, they're clearly behind the investments. I I still think some of those players weren't signed by Lampard for Havertz, for example. I'm not sure about that. I don't, I still don't get that signing, but this is just the one time, Jack, it just doesn't seem right from Chelsea. And and Roman Abramovich said that they have a good relationship in his statement um, with Lampard. So maybe in the future, Lampard's got a future there again, if he can prove it somewhere else. Yeah, well, the, I, everyone's been saying how nice that is from Roman to put that out. Considering it's easy to first, write that, though, isn't it? Well, I, I'm, yeah, I'm going to slag it in a minute. It's, 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 the, it's the first um, time he's done that for a, any sort of football-related decision at the club. Um, and Do you think he only said that, time. though, because he is an ex-player and that fans love him? I think he's, I think he's only said it to sort of soften the blow for, for Chelsea fans. But for me, it's a um, it's just a waste. What, what's the point? Who really cares that he's put that in that club statement? You know, you've you've um, sort of abolished what was the, the planning. You're, I mean, to be honest, and I've seen a lot of Chelsea fans say this this morning, what was the point in hiring him for 18 months? Um, what was the point in putting every Chelsea fan's hopes up? Um, and sort of saying, we're going to invest more in the youth. We're going to do this. We're going to use the academy more. We're bringing in Jody Morris, who's going to be his assistant, but he's also had a lot of time with the youth. And then 18 months later, you just sack him when we're five points off the top four. Mm. Um, Liverpool are having a bad run. They're probably not going to get rid of Klopp. Arsenal have had a bad run. They've kept Arteta. 
a you've lot a worse run, run than, than Chelsea. <laughs> exactly. You've had a bad run and you've kept Ollie and you're now top of the league and good win against your Liverpool last night. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, and, and look, you know, Chelsea, like I said, I've, they've gone back to square one and we're looking for another manager who, like you said, has had issues with the board. Why are they bringing in a magic manager who has issues with the board when the board are the ones that control Chelsea football? Yeah. It makes absolutely, uh, it doesn't make any sense at all. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a, it's just a bit of a d- depressing one really for actual pr- um, proper Chelsea fans because you know Frank Lampard is somebody that knows the club, knows the ethics, knows what it takes to um, look after the, the the fans and the supporters. And I think it's also a bit. I know we're in lockdown, but I think it's a bit weird for the club to do it now. And they've done it because they know that there's no fans at the stadium to absolutely trash the decision that they've made. Um, Look when Rafa Benitez came in. His first game for us, uh, he came out and he got absolutely booed at. It was was because they absolutely hated that decision. And I feel like it would be the same thing this time round. So they've done it in a time when there is no fans um, at the stadium. I know Abramovich has sort of got a bit of a love for Thomas um, Tuchel. So when he became available, you know, and we were starting in that bad run, there was always then rumours that were going to come round. Um, that run only started when you lost to Arsenal in, on Boxing Day, which yeah, is less than a month ago. At, when you look at the, the teams that maybe we've lost against, they've actually, they're teams that have done really well this season. Yes, I know Everton we lost 1-0 to, but they've been had you know decent form this year. We lost to Man City, who you know, had sort of picked up again in that time we played them. Arsenal again sort of hit stride as soon as we paid them. Um, And then Leicester, who again are having a a really great season. And I think that Leicester game probably was the one that sealed his fate, to be honest. Um, And it was a poor display. You know, we did the live stream and it was depressing as a fan to watch that performance. Um, But So I think maybe that might have um, had an issue, but... Yeah, I mean, look, to tell the players not to come in this, uh, this morning uh, and to sack Lampard, it's a bit depressing, actually, because he never got to say goodbye as a player um, when we got rid of him. And now he's never been, he's not, he's not been able to say goodbye as a manager as well. No. Like, do we just treat him like absolute trash? I mean, what, what you know, so, um, yeah, it's, it's a bit depressing, to be honest. And, and look, you know, obviously I'll follow um, Chelsea Football Club with whatever decision they make, but it's a very depressing one, considering, you know, we fired up. Um, greatest ever player and and if you can't give that person any time how are you supposed to give anybody else uh, more time at the club so I did speak to a a, a Chelsea friend of mine earlier Uh, I do have other Chelsea friends no offense Jack Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I'm cheating on you Uh, (laughs) but he he um he, he said to me he's done with football now and after hearing about that and I I it's probably a bit of an overreaction but it is a bit like well yeah, okay. What's the point of being a manager? Who'd, who'd want to be a manager of Chelsea? I feel like Chelsea and Real Madrid are the two clubs for me who I just would not want to manage because you could win three Champions Leagues in a row and get sacked and then you do, then they miss you and then they come back. <coughs> so damn. Uh, it's just, it makes no sense and it makes the club look stupid. But it'll be interesting now because I can't, it'll be interesting to see what Tuchel does between now uh, and, and the end of the season. But with Lampard, what, what next for him do you reckon? Because, I mean, I mean, I was reading in our group chat earlier that, uh, you know, Neil Lennon's been doing a pretty bad job at Celtic. Celtic maybe for him? I, I don't know. Where, where do you think he could go next? I think he's going to take some time out. I think this one will hurt. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it's going to be a sore thing. And I think Jody Morris, again, is 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 another one that I think obviously he's been his assistant. I think he'll he'll have to leave the club as well because, you know, the new guy will bring in his new sort of management and that coaching staff behind Frank Lampard is proper Chelsea. You know, they all, they're all yeah. um, people that, that give 100% for the club. So we're going to be losing all them, which, again, is a sort of disgrace in that sense. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think Frank's going to take a – I don't know how long it'll be, but I think he'll take a bit of time out. Um, have to sort of process it Um, and then look a job like that you know could be could be good for him I think um, you know maybe getting out of the sort of Premier League um, sort of whirlwind as it is uh, and maybe going up to the um, Scottish leagues maybe alongside Gerrard would be quite interesting I mean Celtic Rangers rivalry between them two would be um, you know pretty tasty it might actually get me to watch a bit of um, Scottish football (laughs) <laughs> um, but um, but uh, you yeah, don't. <laughs> no. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, look. Um, maybe in a couple of years when Wrexham are up 
the divisions we can maybe uh, apply for maybe Frank Lampard as manager there but um, yeah I think for the time being um, he'll probably just take a bit of time out and maybe see where his, where his next option is but yeah I mean look it's uh, a bit of a sad day for, for all Chelsea fans to be honest I'm looking forward to the F1 now can we just have some F1 coming back so I don't have to talk <laughs> about football that's at least two months away, my friend. Oh, no, uh, hopefully no. not too long away, my friend. Not too long away. But, uh, uh, but uh, I mean, wow. It's, yeah. What do you think Tuchel can do then with this team? Do you, I mean, the, the one thing I'd like to talk about is Timo Werner, for example. He's, mm-hmm. he, didn't he miss a penalty yesterday as well? He did. Against Lewin, did, which, yeah. you know, even when it's given to him to end that goal drought, it's not easy, is it? Um, Tammy Abraham got a hat trick, but again, it's Luton Town. Maybe he should just be a Championship player, if you ask me, <laughs> like he was with Swansea <laughs> or Villa or whatever. <laughs> but um, but yeah, surely straight away, that's what Tuchel needs to do. Then is to just get Werner back on the score sheet, for example, and get Havertz to actually bring some magic to that midfield. Yeah, well, that's what they're all talking about this morning. And um, like, obviously, he's German, and so he's going to be bringing in and helping that the, the sort of German players in the squad. I think that's BS. I mean, just because you speak the same language doesn't mean you're going to be, um, you know, sort of helping them and making them even better. That doesn't make any, that you know that doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, obviously, you know, it, like you said, he, he he is a tactician, so it might be that he, he might be able to get the best out of them. I think it, you know, it will mean that he maybe is having Werner will have more chance playing actually on the as a central striker, uh, maybe going forward. I think you know, obviously, we've gone into um, context about playing Werner on the wing and maybe that you know isn't his best position. He did get an assist yesterday uh, for for Tammy Abraham's first goal. So look, you know, yeah, okay, he's not getting on the score sheet. Uh, but he's, you know, he's actually confident enough to say, "I'll take the penalty." And I think that that means a lot more than him just sitting back and saying, "Actually, because I'm low on confidence, I won't take it." Even if he misses, he, he still wants that opportunity to score. So for me, as a striker, that's still what I want to see. Even if he's not getting on the score sheet and he's, you know, missing the penalties, but I think you know, just having that desire to say, "I'll still take them." Um, you know, is is sort of what I, you know, I want to see as out of a striker. But yeah, if he can get the best out of them, then great. Um, but yeah, I, I still feel like I don't really care about that to be honest, because of you know how it's sort of transpired in this last 24 hours after we've won a game in the next round. We know who we're playing in the next round of the FA Cup. Um, yeah, okay, we've got a tough opponent in the Champions League against Atletico Madrid. I think that'll be a tough um, match mm. when the Champions League gets back started again. Um, and we've got actually a really tough game against Wolves on Wednesday as well. So. Um, look, I mean, if he comes back, he comes in for the game um, against Wolves. Um, you know, I, I don't. I think it will, will sort of struggle. So it might be that the first couple of games that he's in charge, you know, we're, we're still um, having difficulties. But then we're having the issue again of he'll come in, and then in the summer he'll want sign-ins, uh, and then we'll need time for his sign-ins, yeah. and we'll just be in a we'll just be in a bloody vicious circle. It'll just continue. And this one time where Chelsea fans thought maybe. Maybe we'll go with the youth. Maybe we'll invest. Maybe we'll have more time. Uh, but no, um, it's gone. It's gone back to uh, sort of square one, and we're bringing in a completely um, different manager who has no sort of um, working relationship with the club already. You know, no, doesn't know the fans, doesn't know the, the way the club is run, and um, yeah, we're sort of starting all over again. So yeah, it's a little bit. I can see why fans are so disappointed because obviously I'm one of them. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a bit of a sad day for Chelsea Football Club, really. Well, I'll say this now before we wrap up about uh, Roman Abramovich. You'll never have a manager. <laughs> It'll just always be a temporary manager, if you ask me, when it comes to your We might as well just say temporary Chelsea. in every guy that exactly. signs. Exactly. Oh, it's just a, what an absolute joke. Well, I, I completely disagree with Roman's move there. Maybe he should just stay in Israel. Uh, anyway, my thanks to Jack Price. And of course, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to Let's Talk Sport.